Welcome to Healthcare Workflow Process Improvement, Process Mapping Lecture D, Gaines-Sarsen Notation. This lecture covers Gaines-Sarsen Notation for data flow diagrams. The objective for this lecture is to read and interpret Gaines-Sarsen data flow diagram. The topics covered in Lecture D are details about Gaines-Sarsen Notation for data flow diagrams and Gaines-Sarsen symbols and conventions for process mapping. Lecture D does not cover other parts of Gaines-Sarsen notation and is not meant to teach you how to draw the diagrams, only to understand and interpret them in case you encounter them in practice. Each of the methods for diagramming a process has its own set of capabilities. Gaines-Sarsen represents the process context that is, the process or system boundaries, interactions with the outside world, and the major functions. It also represents information content, the order or sequence of the data flow steps involved in the process, the transformations that occur or should occur, and the roles that perform the processes. While Gain and Sarsen recognized the importance of representing information content and flow control, they did so through text data dictionaries, lists of the data elements, and structured if-then type statements. Since these are not graphic representations, we will not cover them here. Gain and Sarsen represented context, data flow, and data transformation through one diagram type, the data flow diagram, DFD. Their approach used a high-level DFD to show context, and a more detailed, or series of more detailed, diagrams to show data flow steps. Data transformation is represented on the DFD by a process symbol that indicates that data transformation occurs. Then the actual transformation is specified using text. Gain-Sarsen notation was introduced in Chris Gain and Trish Sarsen's 1977 book, Structured Systems Analysis, Tools and Techniques. The book was later published in 1979 by Prentice Hall. Gain and Sarsen, 1979. Gain Sarsen notation is used for data flow diagrams. Although we have not seen Gain Sarsen notation used in healthcare, process analysts might encounter Gain Sarsen style diagrams. Thus, we provide introductory level information to the notation. Gain Sarsen notation is specific to data flow diagrams which show the movement, transformation, and storage of data. This is an example of a simplified online appointment scheduling Gaines-Sarsen diagram. The diagram describes a data flow where a patient enters a web inquiry which generates two checks against different databases, after which the information including an option to accept or decline the appointment is returned to the patient for acceptance. Gaines-Sarsen data flow diagram notation uses these four symbols. Entities show the people roles, organizations, or other things with which the system communicates, i.e., sources or consumers of data. Processes are shown by square rectangles with rounded corners. They represent data processes, i.e., the various individual functions that the system carries out to transform data inputs into outputs. Process boxes can be numbered to show the sequence in which they are carried out. Flows are shown by straight arrows. They are the connections between the entities, processes, and data stores. They represent the information that the processes require as input and the information they generate as output. Data stores are shown by an open-ended long rectangle. They represent collections of data that the system must access, read from, or write to, or remember for some period of time. Data stores typically exist as files or databases. Entities represent people, organizations, or other things that interact with the system, i.e., entities are outside of the system, that is, they are part of a process, but external to the information system. Entities send or consume information, and in gain sarsen notation are also called sources or sinks of information. If the same entity is shown more than once in a diagram, a diagonal line is added to the lower right-hand corner to visually distinguish it. For example, if the nurse entity was drawn twice, to keep from having a lot of crisscrossing lines on the diagram, 
a single diagonal line would be added to the lower right-hand corner. Further, if a medical assistant entity was similarly drawn twice on the same diagram, two diagonal lines would be added to visually distinguish it from the nurse and patient entities. Processes transform data. The process should be named or described by a single word, a verb, phrase, or simple sentence that describes what the process does. Similar to other notations, a good name will generally consist of a verb-object phrase, such as, check availability. In some cases, the processes are named for a role, an organization, or a machine that performs the process. Processes are given a number in the upper right-hand corner. This is an identifier and does not imply sequence. Optionally, processes can also have a lower section, similar in appearance to the process identifier part at the top, in which the role or machine that accomplishes the process or the physical location of the process is undertaken. Similar to ISO 5807, Gaines-Sarsen notation uses straight arrows. Arrows should be named to indicate the meaning of the data that moves along the flow, that is, a noun. Data flows with a verb name are incorrect. They signify a process that has been omitted. Data flow in and out of a process must be altered in some way, i.e., not labeled the same thing. A flow can represent only one type of data, for example, request or reply, or consolidate several elementary data flows into one flow, for example, request and reply. This is dependent on the intended detail level of the diagram. The same content may have a different meaning in different parts of the system. For example, address, as input by the receptionist, versus address after validation with the directory. Arrows indicate direction of the data flow, for example, from the practice EMR to the pharmacy. The data store is used to model a collection of data at rest. Data stores can be in computerized or non-computerized form, such as paper charts, microfiche, index cards, etc. Stores are passive. Processes put data in or read data. Like processes, data stores can be given an identifying number. For example, D1, D2, etc., where D denotes a data store, and the number serves as a unique identifier. Like entities, data stores can be drawn more than once on a diagram to avoid crisscross lines. In this case, a vertical line is added to the closed end of the data store shape. Unlike Yordan notation, gaines sarsen does not use an event list to indicate things that stimulate action from the system. Things that stimulate action from a system are indicated by entities. gaines sarsen like Yordan notation, uses level diagrams, that is, a roll-up and drill-down approach where increasing levels of detail are shown on successive diagrams. A process called functional decomposition is used to represent each process in more detailed steps, processes. Each process in a DFD can be exploded, i.e., redrawn to show increasing levels of detail. When this is done, Decimal numbers can be used to identify the lower detail level process while maintaining the links to the parent or higher level process on the parent diagram. Context diagram is the highest level. There are as many lower levels as needed. gaines sarsen conventions include choosing meaningful names for processes, flows, stores, and terminators, numbering the processes and data stores, making sure the DFD is internally consistent and consistent with any associated DFDs, and exceptions and error handling are shown on lower-level diagrams. The size of the shapes should be consistent throughout the diagram. Keeping the size of the boxes consistent means that a short enough process name needs to be found so that it fits in the box, or that the name may be abbreviated. We found no guidance on the use of color shading for shapes or arrows, and expect that since the notation was developed in the 1970s, that color was not commonly used on the diagrams. However, today, color may be used to visually show different types of entities, processes, 
data stores, or flows. Arrows in Gainsarsen are straight and horizontal or vertical, i.e., no diagonal or curved arrow lines. Double-headed arrows can be used instead of two separate arrows in opposite directions, such as to represent, request, and reply. Hopkins enumerated rules for correctness for these diagrams. Hopkins, 2006. These rules can be used to assess the logical consistency of the diagrams and include Entities may not send data directly to other entities. Entities may not send data directly to data stores. Data must be processed in some way first. And Entities may not get data directly from data stores. Data must be processed in some way first. Information is neither created or destroyed. It must come from and go to somewhere. Information comes from and goes to entities and data stores via processes. Watch for spontaneous data creation and black holes. Note, in-only data stores may be okay as when being read by another system. Also, out-only data stores may be okay as when getting data from another system. Data flows with a verb name signify a process that has been omitted. Like your DAW notation, Gaines-Sarsen is a set of symbols and conventions named for the people who developed it. Gaines-Sarsen notation has not been adopted as a standard. As such, there is no formal maintenance organization. Individuals use and adapt it to suit their needs. This concludes Lecture D, Process Mapping, Gaines-Sarsen Notation. You should now be able to understand Gaines-Sarsen symbols and conventions for data flow diagrams and be able to read and interpret data flow diagrams that use Gaines-Sarsen Notation.